Hey everyone, in this video, let's do a review of Grok 3. In order to do so, here we are at x.com, and in order to access Grok, we can go about it a couple ways. We can either click on the option in the menu on the left, or you can see this little icon here at the bottom right. If we click on that, then that's going to bring up a small chat window here that we can contact uh, Grok through. Or if we click on Grok over here, then we can see an expanded view. If we click on the focus mode, then we're now focused entirely on Grok. Up at the top right hand corner, you're going to find an option to bookmark a chat or you can look at your chat history. This is quite nice as an additional feature because this was not available before. And this is uh, bringing Grok much more in line with apps like ChatGPT and other leading chatbots that uh, allow you to maintain your conversations. And that's something that uh, Grok was not doing before. Um, here you can see all of our bookmarks. I don't have any bookmarks yet. But also here, this is really nice. We have an image section for any images that you have generated using Grok. So those are some really nice uh, updates. And uh, let's just kind of go through what uh, my experience with Grok has been so far. And it's quite positive. It's definitely uh, more uh, in line now with ChatGPT, Claude, uh, different things like that, DeepSeek. And um, one of the nice things about Grok or what allows Grok to stand apart from other uh, other chatbots is that Grok is pulling from real time information that comes from Twitter uh, or X. And uh, so you're getting some very up to date information when it comes to Grok. Something that I've noticed with like ChatGPT, for example, is that the data seems to be delayed about a month or so. Um, it kind of depends, but I've asked questions of ChatGPT before and it hasn't been aware of more current events. So this is really where Grok stands apart. The fact that it is actually pulling from real-time information, then that is uh, a big deal. Um, one of the things though that I would say Grok still does not offer, uh, is not competing, so to speak, with uh, ChatGPT and other similar platforms like Claude, etc., is that there's no memory through your conversation. So if you have a conversation with ChatGPT over here, or sorry, with Grok over in one of your other uh, uh, chat, uh, one of your chats, then that memory doesn't carry over into your other conversations. And this is something that I find with ChatGPT that really is the reason that I continue to use it and depend on it because I like the fact that ChatGPT is able to cross-reference our different conversations because it gets much more intuitive responses. And if there's something that I want to reference, then I don't have to re-explain all of that to ChatGPT. Now, Grok still does not allow you to have a memory between the conversations. So that's one thing that I would say is a downside. Another thing is I did try uh, a couple of uh, tests here just to see how Grok would respond. So I used my YouTube channel and I uh, asked, uh, can you review this site? And the response that Grok came back with was inaccurate. Um, it uh, gave a description of the channel that's not accurate. And um, so this is at least some indication that uh, not everything that you feed into Grok, if you give it a link or if you uh, offer an attachment of some sort um, or just the questions that you ask, you're not always going to get something that is entirely accurate. And this is the case with any chatbot. You need to go in with any chat chatbot understanding that the information is, I think it's best used as a brainstorming tool. If you go in and expect it to answer questions entirely uh, uh, accurately, then you might be getting some misinformation there. So it's still a good idea to uh, do some more research if you need to. Now that's uh, not always the case. Sometimes you can definitely get what you're looking for, but I would say that um, uh, Grok and other 
chatbots, they're still not entirely accurate in every way. And one of the reasons that that might be is because of the philosophy behind the model itself. The people who create the model, it could be that they are injecting their own bias to some degree. And so because of that, sometimes the results that you get are going to be filtered through that bias. And that is uh, uh, a larger conversation to be had about all chatbots and who is designing the bot and what is it that they, um, what is it they are withholding or adding to the model uh, in order to have it respond in certain ways. And that's something that I've found with, uh, you know, uh, Gemini famously had an issue with that. Uh, DeepSeek has an issue with that. I would say that ChatGPT so far, while it might have a bias in certain regards, what I have found with ChatGPT is that if you reason with it, then it's really quite good at acknowledging your criticisms and concerns and actually having a conversation with you. And I think all chatbots can do that to some degree. I would say that uh, with DeepSeek specifically, um, there are certain things that it simply will not talk about. And I won't get into that, but you can do some research onto it, but there are certain things that it will not engage with you on. And that is an indication of the bias that's put into its uh, programming. So one thing uh, also to take a look at here with Grok, is you have a couple of options here, deep search and think. And these both do something similar with deep search. What you're looking at is um, it's going to not just do a simple search. If you have a specific question that you're asking, it's going to do a deep search and it's going to spend more time combing the internet and the information that's out there in order to provide an answer. So this is a really good thing. If you do want to make sure that you're ensuring accuracy as much as possible, then deep search is going to be a good way of going about that. The other option here is the think option. And this is a really good option to toggle on if you're talking about something that is uh, nuanced and um, you require uh, some additional uh, processing behind your query to make sure that you're getting the most specific information possible. They're really quite similar, but in this case, uh, I used the think option for asking Grok about an app that I am designing. And the results that came back are really quite nice. And one of the things that I noticed is that Grok will actually take you through it's thought process. And this is something that um, I noticed with DeepSeek, which I really quite liked, is that it will do the same thing. It'll kind of like give you an idea of how it's approaching your query. And Grok does the same thing. So you can kind of look through here, and this is all of the, uh, th the thinking that kind of went behind Grok's uh, um, analyzing of my question. So then from there, it actually will spit out a more refined version and give you all of the, the strongest bullet points and everything. And looking through the information that it's provided, I haven't done anything like asked for coding or anything like that. Um, that's something that I'm, I'm going to be getting into, but it does seem that it has at least some uh, ability to uh, to do that for you. If you're actually looking for code, uh, then you can ask Grok for that, but I haven't tested that out yet. At the very least, just with the basic response that I got from my question, it, uh, is quite nuanced and gave me some really interesting results. So that's the long and short of it. When it comes to Grok, you're looking at, uh, a much more improved, version than was there before. The downside I would say is still that it's not pulling from your different chats. Um, but the trade-off there is that Grok is pulling from the internet and current events for more up-to-date data. And so that's something to take into consideration when you are engaging with different chatbots. So I would say at this point, Grok 3 is definitely a significant step up. I would encourage you to take a look at the app on either Android or iOS because they are, uh, it's it's a, a more, well, it's really quite similar, but it's nice to have everything Grok in a single app rather than have it connected 
with X, which is what I'm doing here. So if you actually want to use a designated Grok app, then you can do that now. And uh, that's all there is to it. If you found this video helpful, please leave a comment and like and subscribe for more helpful tips.